Normally, success or failure in examination is the criterion for future prospects. The question is, is too much emphasis being placed on paper qualifications in Nigeria? Is any thought being given to the ability of the person to put the knowledge reportedly acquired into practice? Perhaps we must begin to interrogate why certificates are seen as a means to an end in our society. This has made students desperate enough to go to any length, whether straight or crooked, to acquire them. You must have guessed by now that on this edition, we're beaming our lights on common falsification of results. How did we get here? What can be done to teach these and future generations that the honest part is the best? Welcome to 30 Minutes on NTA News 24. I'm Lydia Samson. Now, it has been revealed that desperation by students and candidates for high scores to enable them study their dream courses at the university, as well as pressure from parents, push some students to falsifying the unified tertiary matriculation examination results. Only recently, Ms. Miyasoma Ejikemi, a student of Aglican Girls Secondary School, Newi Anambra State, sat for 2023 UTME and claimed to have scored 362, allegedly highest in 2023. Well, let me not preempt Thomas Egbetere, who interrogated advanced stages of falsification, causes, motives, and effects. It's over to you, Thomas. The recent report of the UTME candidate from Anambra State, Joy Mesoma Ejikeme, trended both in the conventional and unconventional media, especially the social media. It was a story about her allegedly producing the highest aggregate score in the 2023 UTME, organized by the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAMP. Joy Mesoma Ejikeme claimed that she scored the highest in the 2023 UTME examination. This is my aggregate 362. This is exactly how I printed it. I downloaded it from that site. So they now saying that I forged my results. Is what I don't know. Thankfully, deploying the use of technology, the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board Jump was able to quickly detect that the result was falsified and refuted her claims, saying Joy, earlier being celebrated to have scored the highest mark in the 2023 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, actually falsified her results. She printed a result on the 25th of June, paid 1,500 naira. She printed again on the 3rd of July. But those results she printed, she's not disclosing it to the public. Our template for 2023-2022 result comes with a picture. We stopped using notification of results in 2021. Initially, this did not go down well with many, as the issue generated a lot of public interest, claims and counterclaims, resulting in accusation and counter-accusations, as well as diverse allegations. To solve the puzzle, panel of inquiry was constituted by the Anambra State Government to investigate the matter, resulting in the father of Mesoma, Romanus Ejikeme, owing up that the result was indeed falsified by his daughter. He then rendered an apology to the public. I don't expect that she will do this kind of thing. She did what she's supposed to do. Are you getting me? She's brilliant enough to avoid this kind of thing. And I'm still apologizing to the whole Nigerian Sanjam to pardon. A cross section of Nigerians, while enumerating different ways that people allegedly falsify results, also listed some of the perceived causes and reasons why people falsify results to include peer influence, value system deficit, lack of genuine reward for hard work, as well as over dependence on certificates instead of recognition of honesty. So a lot of people could go online and do a lot of editing and master some documents and do some changes here and there. And then they come out with a very grand, fantastic um, result, just what tailored to meet a specific need. People do that. People falsify results, in my opinion, First, by trying to influence the examining uh, authority. It could be the school giving money to the teachers to give what they call expo. Then again, it could be people not showing at examinations and conniving with school authorities to get someone to write the examination or do proper documentation and ensure that they give people results for which they do not merit. And so you'll find out that there will be results, but the person has not actually sat for the exam. 
someone had taken the exam in proxy for such a person. Uh, so the grades will not represent the person's intellectual prowess. And also, a child that probably thinks that the society might accept them in a better way, probably, okay, let's say, like the best candidates for JAM this year will be posted online, everybody will see it. This pressure can push them into like falsifying their results. Students being sent to school, they are not going for lectures. They didn't meet up their attendance. They didn't want their parents to know that uh, they are not going to school. They will look out for a plan for them to make up their, uh, their, their, their lapses. That is when this falsification will start. Then going through some other places that uh, this thing do happen is uh, all these uh, various business centers. Do they have any, uh, uh, like a body that uh, uh, they send around to go and look into all those institutions? There are various things that they are doing in those places because that is uh, the highest, the, uh, the cyber cafe is another place falsification is taking place. They acknowledge that falsification of results and other vices like examination malpractices and corruption with persons holding position of trust being complicit results in aiding falsification of results, birth certificates and other documents. The opine has a lot of negative effects not only on the nation's educational system but the society at large. Those who have failed us, for last building, you have an engineer who did not really study engineering in terms of building engineer. You have collapsed, you have a doctor who doesn't really understand medicines, and so you go to the hospital, you see somebody Googling, using Google to do prescription. These are all products of such. Falsification tends to undermine the effects of good education. That is, okay, if more if people falsify their results, it tends to like downgrade to what education is capable of doing in any society. And also, this hinders people, for example, like an employer that wants to employ, might not know the grade or might not know the capability of those they are employing. Parents will have paid a huge amount for their words in the school. And these words, they don't want their parents to know that they didn't pass their exam. They will result to falsifying their documents, whereby making way for them to be wherever they want to be in the future. Someone who has worked very hard, who's been working very hard, trying to earn an excellent result, excellent grade, this is so that this is an easy way out. So why should I work very hard? There's no point. If the child is influenced negatively by that, it means the child will be okay. I can do, I'm very, very good. I'm a genius. I can create stuff online. I can clone, I can clone your ID card. The child just goes ahead, clones the ID card, clones the signature and all of that. The child comes up with his, I bet you, not everyone could tell the difference between those. So it's happening. It's happening. Even with the cases of people schooling abroad right now, the cases of people coming up and saying their certificate from a school in Nigeria is fake or it was influenced or something, and it's, it's happening. And this is the negative side of it that is going down to our truth. A child as young as that could come up with something as criminal as this for just a jam result, not even a YA, not even a um, university certificate, just a jam result. It's painful. They reiterate that these vices are not limited to examination candidates. Those interviews say, most parents and guardians, as well as some school proprietors, are major contributors in many ways. If not mitigated, they believe will continue to portray Nigerians badly. They are promoting it in the sense that nobody wants to employ a child that has um, a third class. Nobody wants to celebrate a child that came out with 2.2. Everybody is all over the child that came out with first class or 2.1. So by that, parents are naturally putting the children under pressure not to be real. So you want to do everything to make sure you come out with the best results. So you have the case of children going to bribe teachers, going to pay people. Some parents even go as far as registering their children in special centers. But there are some parents that even bribes all these invigilators just for um, the invigilator to help, probably like give the children probably um, like answer sheets or like probably 
puts them in a special place where they can really cheat. So some parents contribute to this um, falsification. And also the pressure. When parents put like more pressure on their children to get like high grades or by comparing them to probably somebody who has first class, somebody who has better grades, all this pressure can like contribute. They are of the opinion that to mitigate the menace escalating, all stakeholders must be on the same page in acknowledging the negative impact across the value chain, stressing that everyone must be on board to fight against falsifying results and documents. They suggest that government, examination bodies, public and private agencies and examination centers must collaborate to fight and leave no stone unturned to curb all forms of falsification. Doctor, everybody cannot be an engineer. Now here is where counseling comes in. You get students counseling a teacher to look at what area of strength and weakness. Today we have come to realize that it's not, not only doctors, medical, I mean doctors and uh, lawyers are the ones doing well, or accountants. We have people in other fields, music, football, other endeavors, they're doing so very well. And so this is an opportunity for parents to now begin to look beyond the white collar job that people are looking at. Look at what else the children can do. Skills acquisition comes in. How do they acquire skills? What other things can they do with regards to paper qualification to make things better for them? Parents are actually anxious because they worry about the future of their children and that is why some decide to teach them how to cheat or falsify on their behalf. As a parent, I wonder why some people call themselves parents and sense a child to school, to higher institution, to spend four years in school, and that parent cannot go on visitation to check the work of that child, to check on the lecturer, to check on their peer group, to check the attendance of the uh, of their parent, of their child, to know what is going on. I While many say Nigeria must ensure Mesoma's case and all reported cases of falsifying results or certificates must never be repeated by any candidate. There is, however, divergent views on whether Mesoma should be prosecuted. Children need to know that there are consequences for whatever you do. Now, if you leave this case unpunished, you just celebrated, you're, in, you're indirectly or directly celebrating what you did. So children need to learn from that and there should be a punishment. I think um, they should just temper justice with mercy. We know that she's young. It's possible that she's forced. It's possible that she's being pressured. So I think in a situation like this, I think justice should just be tempered with mercy. And the consensus is that all Nigerians must unite to say no by rising against vices that are capable of giving the country a bad image. Thank you, Thomas, for your insights. Moving on, what is the implication of falsifying results? What punitive measures are we looking at? Can mental health issues be ruled out? How is societal pressure, including parents' role in instigating competitiveness or contribution to our children's desperation? Stephen Lonai Wokulu sought answers in our next report. Since the return of democracy in 1999, Nigeria has been bedeviled with the issue of certificate and result forgery. Going down memory lane, a number of politicians have been accused of altering their academic certificates and results, subsequently finding their way to undeserved positions of authority in the country. Some have beaten the dust and were either forced to resign their positions or hindered from assuming the offices they were hitherto considered for. So CD, so CD, musical artists are playing their music, you see everybody driving sport car, ladies lying on the car, everybody lying on the car, make, it, make life look so rosy and easy for you. No, that is not the case. So I think that is what push, is what drive the meta state of this product in touch because they just want to quickly leave the university. I want to quickly, I want to quickly, I want to quickly put out my result out there and let the people know that I'm the eyes and people celebrate me and all. Oh, Social media everybody is posted every day. So to you that you are not posting, you feel like what is going on with me? It's like life is not happening. Things are not working for me. So you are looking for something to post. I'm going to university, I'm graduating, I'm going to private university. Oh, they just honored me in my local government or in my state. My governor is calling for me. I know. So you just want to flash, flash, flash this to people, which goes back to low self-esteem. As long as we do not do the right things, as long as we keep on promoting the negative 
practices in the society. You see, we are a reflection of our own society. So this thing will really uh, continue, you know, to do that. We must really discourage it. A lot of emphasis is really placed on uh, all this qualification, this, uh, you know, what have you. So parents, as well as children, believed, except, you know, they have this high level maybe of marks. They will not get where they want to, what they want to uh, reach. They will not be celebrated. They will not get admission and all that, you know. So emphasis, you know, should be on skills development. It's not only through uh, acquisition of very high grades that can make you a great uh, person, really. A case in point story of the former Speaker of the House of Representatives in 1999. The affected officer was caught in the web of a scandal of attending Toronto University in Canada and it turned out to be false, as his certificate was later discovered to be fake. This eventually led to his resignation from the speakership position at the National Assembly. The implication of uh, forging certificates are many. Number one, you see, that's where you have uh, those who are not, uh, who, those who do not merit the position, you see them occupying the position. Those who do not merit the class where they are, seeing them in the same class. And at the end of the day, instead of making the country to move forward, you see non-entities occupying certain uh, good positions. And we are, I mean, more so we, are, we have uh, good ones that are not uh, making headway. So another implication of uh, certificate forgery is that uh, the student themselves, when they are in school, they may not be able to cope with the rigor of the exam because they only find themselves in a crook way to the class where they are or to the next class where they are. So they may not be able to marry. And that's why you see so many, many of these universities uh, weeded them out. Many of them will come in uh, from 100 level and before you know it, at 400 level, probably 20, 30 or 40 percent of people that came in will not be able to make it to the end. Another prominent office holder who resigned from office on account of certificate forgery was a former minister of finance. The UK trend investment banker was emerged in the scandal of a forged certificate over the mandatory one-year National Youth Service Corps, NYSC scheme for Nigerian graduates. This led to her resignation of that appointment. To the problem of, of this issue of uh, uh, exam practices as it is, and, and is that forgery that is very uh, prevalent in the country. Even, in, even we have a cases of uh, a minister who is now being uh, federal government is suing her for falsification of uh, NYC certificate. Imagine a senator, a senator of the Federal Republic, and a minister. We have cases in the court now that are issue of wrong certificates, certificate forgery and all that. What the parents of the first, the first, second, third generation are refused to fight is what we are passing through today. Now, these people that have that are in position in government get the truth, many of them, not all of them, many of them, or, or, or some of them, maybe some of them, get through the position of, of where they are today, as senator, as, as, as state assembly, as governor, through forgery of, uh, of the certificates. So, and the same thing, and the children are doing the same thing, and when they, they will keep on forging, forging fortification from the primary to the secondary, to jam, to university, they keep on doing my practice and forgery. It's a problem that I've eaten to the fabric of the Nigerian society. The issue of certificate and result forgery has become a recurring decima, with some students now imbibing the culture. The recent controversy between the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMB, and a candidate, Mesoma Ejikeme, 
who sat the 2023 Five Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, has again brought to the fore the urgent need to emphatically address the issue of falsification of results, not just by the UMTE candidates, but by Nigerians at all levels. Society, we have essentially normalized certificate forgery. Many people are doing it not because um, they don't even know the right thing, but almost because society seems to say this is what you should do now because we know of the people who are involved in helping people forge certificates, but we do nothing like, uh, to them, you know. Um, the society tends to condone it. And so what you saw Ms. Yoma do, do, doing was, and the brazen way she went about even uh, creating a video and she had even the support of a lot of people was because it had become the norm. So when people are not uh, sound in their career, are not uh, educated, well educated, they cannot defend a certificate, when they get employed or they get in, in, uh, engaged in any services, the output is always very poor because of wrong foundation. So that's why parents, we as parents, have so much to do in terms of all bringing of our children. Uh, we need to really look into our children, we need to look into their books. They, uh, after they're free from school, they'll come back to the house. Parents have to look at the books of the children, look at what they're doing in school, and see the challenges of the children. JAM has, over the years, nabbed several candidates who reportedly falsified and manipulated their results, but none went viral like that of Ms. Omar, a student of Aglican Girls Secondary School, AGSS, Newi, in Anambra State. Ms. Omar's claim of scoring 362 out of 400 obtainable marks trended on the social media for weeks, and she was celebrated by Nigerians, both home and abroad. Her celebration was, however, cut short when the examination body jammed, said, its investigation on Ms. Omar's result confirmed that her purported result was fake and her correct score of 249 had been withdrawn. JAM also announced that Ms. Omar stands barred from sitting its examination for the next three years. Part of uh, a society that condones, um, you know, forgery. It's, is it possible? I mean, I don't want to say she forged her previous results, but people say, oh, she was an A-class performer in school. So it seems that parents, teachers, our societies, our employers of labor, who are aware that people forge results, are not doing enough to curb it, either by verifying and denying people opportunities if they find that your certificates are forged, or even parents who sometimes know that their children are sitting exams in miracle centers or their children are not, they are not intelligent enough, but they produce you good results and you, you, you're just okay with the fact that the child has a good result. What then is the role of parents in addressing the menace? What appropriate sanctions should be meted out to erring students? Experts say it behoves on the examination body and of course the society at large to rise above sentiments and address the issue of certificate and result forging headlong with a view to sanitizing the entire system of crime in our society. The need to get things the right way, the need not to go a shortcut to acquire anything. And the society should encourage that. We have seen a situation, even some schools involved in helping the children in malpractices just to game the name. These are gone when the standard is there for per, you know, schools, management of schools, most especially this uh, invent of private schools. It's just business. Everybody wants their name to come out as the best school in a, a particular examination or whatever, but the thing is standard. Let's go back to the grassroots. Give these children this foundation that hard work is the best way or to success, that any shortcut, anything gotten in a fraudulent manner is not acceptable. By the time the society begins to frown at things, we will not get it right. So I think that one of the things that has been causing this thing is that the society encourages that, our homes encourages that, uh, even in our religious sectors, 
encourage such a thing. Somebody coming out with a forged certificate and people are aware, it will be covered. Everybody will just overlook it. There should be a better punishment for such attitude so that it will serve as a deterrence to others. Families, educational and religious institutions have roles to play in ensuring positive change and must not be left in the hands of government alone. But we should not forget that education is sacrosanct to our development because if we must develop as a country, we must get it right from childhood. The education must be sound. We must pay attention as much as we pay attention to security. So should we should pay attention to, to education because if the children are not well raised, there will be the criminals that will still go and put a huge budget to fight tomorrow. So we need to start very young. It is the consensus of Nigerians, therefore, that these corrective measures are implemented to ensure a virile nation where hard work, honesty, and dignity will thrive. It is a fact that we all cannot be categorized as the best because people are gifted differently. Therefore, it is pertinent to take pride in our God-given ability and work honestly to increase our knowledge the right way. That's it on 30 Minutes on NTN News 24. Next week, God willing, we'll be here again, beaming our light on another issue. Many thanks for sharing your time with us and stay safe. <laughs>